in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed God is introducing many of you afresh into the ministry. It's like an initiation. Because there are many of you, the call of God is upon your life. Oh yes, there are many of you, the call of God is upon your life. There is a generation that must seek the face of the God of Jacob. The call of God is upon your life. You may not look like it, but I tell you, there is a call of God. You are the answer to the age-long prayer of mothers, the fasting of mothers. Can you find someone that you will use from this family? And his hand has been trailing you for years. Now he's found you. And for those of you watching and following, this is not some Pentecostal jamboree. This is the spirit of the living God stirring up a move. We listen. You see, you will not know what is happening to you now till you get out of this place and then you begin to see doors open in ways you cannot explain. Doors you have tried politically to open and it did not open. By the connections of men when the holy ghost steps in it does not waste your time people are not just falling down and shouting there is a recreation happening over destinies there there are alignments happening perhaps some of you are in ministry here no power no grace you struggle no nothing it's because you are just doing ministry just from a book produced by Zondervan respectfully speaking let him come and back you and you will watch the wonder working power of the Spirit of God you've done business on your own but let him come and hold your hands and you watch the frequency the grace we are all ordinary except that when he comes to us when he comes with us we become instruments of marvel and wonder first to ourselves then to all and sundry please be seated if you can just help those under the anointing don't worry shalabakato <sighs> You know you met him. Oppressions. Just living. Just like that. Yokes. That cannot stand his presence. Just living. Just like that. Covenants. Ordinances. Speakings. That men have vowed that provided you are from this lineage. You cannot rise. Who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord himself has not said so. Satan only looks as powerful as the absence of the Holy Spirit makes it. For the light shineth in darkness. John 1 5 and the darkness comprehended it not. Before I get into the word, let me speak to you. If you are sick in your body here, I stretch my hands right now. Fibroids. Every devil of oppression. Kalatos kadebalakata. I stretch my hands. Be healed now. Be healed now. 
I bring you the life and the glory of heaven. Help them please. Be healed now. High blood pressure goes down now. Every kind of medical diagnosis, we bring it under the influence of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every organ malfunctioning, we declare a correction now. And for every missing organ, we declare creation of a new one now. pain around the limbs be healed right now any genotype problems blood group problems we change it now in the name of Jesus and any altar that has refused to let you go no matter how long in the name of jesus we scatter those altars we scatter those kapatatos katia we scatter those altars let god's people go altars of delay oppression by the power of the holy spirit keeping families down keeping destinies down keeping businesses down abuja hear the word of the lord nigeria hear the word of the lord we come by the rod of a higher priesthood. Let God's people go now. Every gate that will not open for you, we not only open it, we scatter it so that your children can pass. We scatter it in the name of Jesus Christ. Gates of stagnation, gates of shame and reproach, Kaparos Katabaya, be scattered in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. We scatter this gate by the power that raised Christ from the dead. We come by the agency of the Spirit and we make declarations of power. hallelujah listen please listen before you sit down i need to tell you this i made a covenant with god that there is nobody who will ever come for one koinonia service and sit down and share the grace and say i wasted my time no for as long as i am breathing and for as long as god gives me the privilege to represent him through this platform if you ever find your way here and sit down here i assure you the things that will change in your life in one single service will surprise you it is not pride we speak as touching the grace he has given it is wickedness and even evil to keep you here for hours and those following online waste your time and just share the grace no sir it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted lifted above all the mountains and other hills and nations shall flow to it they will say to one another come let us go to the mount of the lord the house of jacob he will teach us his ways the bible says we have not only come to learn we have come to experience Please be seated if you can again. Let's see how far the Lord can help us tonight. Anyone under the anointing close to you whilst I teach, whether you are an usher or not, just help them. We glorify you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Let's spend a few minutes teaching the word and then we'll pray. We are a people who embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit in his entirety. 
but we are also a people who have profound honor and value for the word of God Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 Acts 20 32 and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace the Bible says which is able to number one build you up it is only the word of God that is able to build men number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the Bible says and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation hallelujah when we invest time learning the word we are learning the modus operandi of the kingdom we are allowing the mind of Christ Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you permit this mind this thinking this ideology to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the Word of God gives us enlightenment spiritual illumination access to light and John 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not he said that was the true light that lighted every man hallelujah he came to bear witness to the light John 1 verse 6 there was a man the Bible says sent from God whose name was John next verse says the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe verse 8 he says he was not that light he was only sent to bear witness of that light 9 says that was the true light Jesus by the ministry of the Holy Spirit the light that lighted every man his ministry is for every man not just church people every man are we blessed now let me just give a little theological background theologically speaking there are certain words you've heard me say it again that there are certain words that even though used in the Christian faith are not found verbatim in scripture there are a number of them we use them as a lingua franca among believers but then these are not words that are captured in scripture one of it is the word rapture you will not find any word rapture in scripture are we together but then we know that there is an event that we call rapture praise the name of the lord another word is trinity you never find oh by the way let's bless azaria family they are following right now let's give them a big 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 god bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the word trinity because before i begin to talk about the holy spirit i need to clear the air over an issue that has remained for very long in the body of christ the confusion as to the triune nature of god it's been a confusion among believers among bible scholars there's been different schools of thought as to the triune nature of god the bible says here o israel the lord our god is one lord and so many people have used that scripture to negate the existence of divinity in a tripartite form are we together it seems as though there are three gods the father the son and the holy spirit which one do we worship which one do we serve and it's brought a lot of confusion so when we teach about the ministry of the holy spirit there is further confusion again if this is not cleared and the reason is because the holy spirit happens to be largely invisible and there has been no direct revelation of his form in terms of his human form are we together but then let me just take two or three minutes to let you know that the concept of the triune nature of god is a fact the bible does tell us 
that even though God is the God of the universe, his operation is tripartite. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is a foundational understanding to the Christian faith. If you do not believe this, something might be wrong with your conviction. Are we together now? That it is true that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we call it the Godhead. The word one God does not mean a singular. It means unity. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, united. Is that true? Genesis chapter 1. Let's go to the book of the beginnings. Now, theologically speaking, every time you want to examine a body of spiritual truth, a subject, um, you begin your study from, there's what we call the law of first mention. So you go to scripture and then the context with which that word was mentioned first is the context that guides you as you study that subject. Are we together? So we go to the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, the Bible says, God, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, it says, and the earth was without form and void. Now you would notice, um, let me not assume, Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2. It seems like a contrast because according to the character of God's creation, everything he creates is good. Is that true? Now we see that God created the heavens and the earth, verse 1. And then verse 2 now says the earth was without form again. So what was God creating? The earth was without form, void, darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Hebrew expression, tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos. And then the Bible says, please go to verse 2, just keep it there, verse 2. It says, and the spirit of God. So we see that the first the first dimension of the Godhead revealed in scripture was the Holy Spirit and he was called the Spirit of God. He moved upon the face of the waters. Just for knowledge, Genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer. Right? Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 did not just happen within a short time span. Now you know that the Bible is a piece of literature. And it was written uh, with, with honor to all the principles of literature, meaning that it was written largely in summary. Are we together now? You would think that it just happened again and again. There were prophets in the Bible that never met themselves. They were hundreds of years apart. But when you read them because you are reading a summary, it looked like one just died and next week the other one started. No. Hallelujah. So... Lucifer was judged in Genesis 1 verse 1. God created the heavens and the earth. And then the gap between Genesis 1 verse 1, 1 verse 2 in theology is called the gap theory. It's an attempt to explain what happened. The hundreds of years apart that would have led to this chaos and confusion. Because Genesis 1 verse 2 is not an expression of the character of God outside of the influence of another deity the earth being dark and formless was as a result of the judgment so what you call creation story in genesis chapter one is actually a re-creation story that was not the original creation are we together job in the height of his frustration when you read chapter 38 I'm just giving us an introduction, just a background. In chapter 38, Job was so frustrated because of his predicaments. The Bible says he summoned God and God came to him in a whirlwind and said, Who is this that dark not counsel without knowledge? He says, Gird your loins as a man and I would demand of you. Answer me, question one. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? So there was a day the foundations of the earth was laid. We don't see that in the Genesis account. Are we together now? It says, declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 2. It says, who had laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest. In fact, let me tell you this for your knowledge. I hope you realize that what we call the Garden of Eden, the Garden of the Lord, that we call Eden, where Adam and Eve, the east side of the Eden, was where they were kept. The first occupant, according to the revelation that scripture brings, in the Garden of Eden, was Lucifer himself. 
thou was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. You now see the vendetta between Lucifer and man. Because Lucifer was an expression of God to the then creation. The word eternity means the formation of infinite dispensations. We are not the first of the human race. No, we are just a little above 6,000 years. Scientists show us the existence of a lot of humanoid species before us. There's nothing, um, there's nothing false about it. Adam, hmm, understand what I'm saying now. I'm teaching koinonia. And then those who are interested in learning through this platform. I know why I'm saying what I just said now. Adam is not the first man. No. Adam was the first man created in the image. There was a dispensation where Lucifer was head over them. He was a representation. What Adam, what God brought man to do. There was a dispensation that Lucifer was mandated to be the revelation of God to them. And on account of that assignment, he's making angels, cherubs, were not made from dust. They were made from quantized light. Light, the depreciation of their body, but the degree to which the light upon them excels. That is the degree to which they have visited the throne room. Because every time they meet him, it's a law to both human and angels that as we behold him, we are changed. Are we together now? Yes. So, Lucifer, it was on the strength of his build-up, the dexterity of his making, that pride came upon him. Are we together? Yes. There's no time to begin to talk about Lucifer. Lucifer was that cherub, the Bible says, that covereth. He was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. The entire object of his making was it was it was an artistry of God and his assignment was the custodian the light bearer revelations are stored as light and that was his office the son of the morning on account of the revelations of God that he had he built pride and said do you know what if this is all that makes God God then I have the secrets to be God I will exalt myself above the stars of God he said I will be like the most high treason was found in him he wanted to run a parallel government so you can choose either God or him and there was war in heaven now don't downplay the level of Lucifer's intelligence even in heaven he deceived one third of the angels wow what would he have told them that made one third of the angels to literally leave their original estate the bible says and there was judgment in heaven michael the archangel you see that they met again over the body of moses you again they met michael said don't waste my time the lord rebuke you so now it was the judgment that came as a result of the fall of lucifer when you read the book of revelations it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for lucifer that great dragon has been cast into the earth he has come with anger and fury that's why uncontrolled anger is the most classic proof that there is a spirit manipulating you yes sir lucifer came down to the earth with anger and he was hovering around the face of the waters it was the judgment of lucifer that led to Genesis 1 verse 2. Do you understand now? So Genesis 1 verse 3 is God now bringing light. What light? This was not sunlight, I hope you know. Sunlight was created in day 4. This was the light, that the life-giving factor of creation. He withdrew it in the judgment of Lucifer. And so now, God said, Light be. That's the original Hebrew rendition. Light be. And there was light and then he began to create everything and he saw that it was good and so on and so forth and then when we get to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 this is the first classic expression that proves the triune nature of God and God said let us let us so this was this was a parliament there was a meeting going on not let me let us 
but this does not automatically tell you whether there are three they could be ten let us so how do we know that it is the father the son and the holy spirit are we learning next scripture very quickly matthew chapter 3 please from verse 14 this is the baptism of jesus now look up please a little background again about jesus i hope you know that jesus came to the earth for many reasons principally to be a mediator to bring many sons into glory are we together he came and as, ex and as an expression of the love of the father this was revealed through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that whosoever believes in him that report might receive the life of god in the flesh to show us that it was possible to live a victorious life the third reason why he came was to become a marking script a correction over our perceptions about god because until jesus came there were many things about god that people did not know they did not have the rich um opportunity to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit to the degree to which we enjoy he would come upon them and then go away he did not have a permanent residence within them so they credited all kinds of things to god jesus came as god's manual god's reference point so that everything you thought god did or was you looked at the life of jesus to correct your orientation are we together now matthew chapter 3 please thank you jesus is someone learning but john forbade him saying this was jesus at the baptism now i have need to be baptized of thee and thou comest to me and jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he allowed him next verse now watch this and jesus the logos of god john 1 1 remember in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the same was with god so we see two there the word and god the same was with god even though he was god also now the bible says and jesus so we see that jesus was there when he was baptized he went straight out of the water and lo the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of god are you seeing now so this is jesus walking on earth in the flesh the heavens open and the holy spirit descending upon him lightning upon him like a dove 17 and then a voice which is not the holy spirit this is jesus on earth this is the holy spirit coming and another third voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son whoever calls him father what should be his name whoever calls jesus son must be jesus proved that he was father when he called jesus i mean uh, god proved that he was father when he called jesus so jesus the word the spirit of the living god the father one last proof in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established matthew 28 the great commission from verse 18 matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth next verse go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of this is jesus talking now baptizing them in the name of the father of the son of the holy ghost he didn't mention any fourth person so we know from the mouth of jesus that the godhead is trinity jesus himself spoke are you ready for one last proof acts chapter 7 this was the matthias stephen about to be stoned acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please acts chapter 7 don't be tired of learning scripture it gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of god on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have it says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed when they heard these things they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth verse 55 now the bible says but he stephen now being full of the holy ghost so who was in stephen 
the holy spirit he looked steadfastly into heaven what did he see the glory of god and then jesus standing at the right hand so we see the holy spirit in stephen god manifesting in his glory the father and the son standing at his right hand why am i saying this thing so that you will believe from scripture not from opinion not from charismatism from scripture if your confidence is just based on what someone said it would dwindle with time but when your faith is anchored on scripture it becomes unbending you become immovable are we together now now the word spirit comes from the latin word spiritus it means breath spiritus spi as numa all mean the same thing these are expressions of spirit are we together so a spirit typically speaking um generally it just means the life-giving factor of anything the life-giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing are we together Gener who is the holy spirit number one the holy spirit is god acts chapter 5 from verse 3 to 4 please the holy spirit is god this was the story of ananias and sapphira we're proving that the holy spirit is not just an archangel there are many well-meaning sincere people who have carried teachings all around the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not a man the holy spirit is god in every way he's not junior to god he's not one of the errant people in heaven he is God in every way. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Are you saying that now? And to keep back part of the price of the land. Verse 4. Whilst it remained, was it not thine? After it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied to men, but to God. Peter now says... You have lied to the Holy Ghost and then you have lied to God. The Holy Ghost is God in every way. Number two, very quickly, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of god he is not just the manifestation he is the revealer of the presence and the power of god the holy spirit benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of jesus how true based on scripture he gives omnipotence to the presence of he could only be in one location at a time but now the Holy Spirit has come to multiply the influence of Jesus across the earth. He is the continuation of the ministry of Jesus. But now not just localized to one man. He can be everywhere at the same time. So the Holy Spirit is a revealer. He is also the manifestation of the presence of God. Are we learning? This is very, very important. Number three, very quickly, who is the Holy Spirit? The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the wisdom of God. This is very powerful. Wisdom, the wisdom of God. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, he says, the Spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of wisdom. That means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom. There are three levels of wisdom as the Bible teaches. There is wisdom that comes from above, that is first pure. There is wisdom that is scientific, Sophia, that comes with experimentation and experience. There is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic. The wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above. Are we together? The spirit of wisdom ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 paul is praying now 
Ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom next point who is the Holy Spirit this is a very very important point I'm about to bring about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture the Holy Spirit is the authentic author of Scripture. Not just Paul, not just David the Psalmist, not just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture. Second Peter chapter 1, please, and verse 21. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 21. 2 Peter 1 21 Hallelujah You can't find it go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 2 Timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation listen carefully through faith which is in jesus christ next verse it says all scripture how many all scripture old testament the gospel acts of the apostles the epistles revelation all scripture is given by inspiration of god by inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness verse 16 it says 17 now that the man of god may be mature and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own is that true the original person thank you second peter 1 21 for prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost if you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book you will be rewarded for your intelligence but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own is that true so who really is the author of scripture no it can't be peter it can't be john they were moved by the holy spirit why is this important because if you ignore the holy spirit in an attempt to learn scripture you will end up in error listen carefully the source of error the real source of error is to just be scientific about the bible and ignore the person of the holy spirit in as much as the bible is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the holy spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed you can open it but only the holy spirit can unlock the seals are we together the holy spirit is the author of scripture that means the next time you open your bible to study the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book they only made it available to us holy spirit you are the author of scripture open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see it says open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law is god blessing us the holy spirit is the author of scripture now the holy spirit was revealed in the old testament like we know he came upon great men and women to do exploits but the character of his manifestation listen carefully 
you would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, the person who came closest as far as relationship with the Holy Spirit is concerned was David. The man David. Cast me not away from your presence, he said. Take not your spirit from me. Are we together? But generally speaking, the Holy Spirit would come upon men in the Old Testament. Prophets, priests, kings. And then... He would perform something supernatural through them and return back. So they knew his power, but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. They experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia, the fellowship of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the Holy Spirit is ignored. It is the presence and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure. He is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom. Write this down please. It was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. You also find that in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. The Holy Spirit was the one who birthed the church. The Bible says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby as a family we can now cry, Abba, Father. He brought us into this family. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, when you read the Bible says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one accord. Suddenly, verse 2, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty, a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it came and sat on each of them. Uh -huh. Verse 4, the Bible says, And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost birthed the church and if the church ignores him today then we'll become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the Holy Spirit is for everyone. He's not just for pastors, apostles, prophet, believer, and unbeliever, and creation generally speaking. It's more than just the salvation experience, as you'll be learning shortly. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Because for many people, the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, here's what they tell you. I'm not called into ministry. Just leave me. I'm a businessman. I will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him. And go and do your crusade there. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along? eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to end hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall.